Hi, welcome along to another video. Links to the articles are in the information section of the video. So we'll make a start in the Red Deer Advocate from July the 29th. Welcome to Canada's Hail Alley. Alberta gets more frequent and intense hailstorms in all the country. Hence, the only cloud seeding program in Canada exists in Alberta. So we've been following the Canada situation. It's just another little bit of news there that talks about the cloud seeding program that exists in Alberta. So from Canada, we go over to Malaysia. Palm oil players urged to step up game to eradicate haze. He added that cloud seeding is just a symptomatic answer to the haze that does not solve the problem. So more weather modification being done for another reason. In the UK, Oxford Research Encyclopedias, Climate Science. There's a report on climate engineering published in July 2020. This portfolio entails adaption to changing climate conditions and so-called climate engineering measures. The Pledge Times, India, from July the 31st, 2020. So John Moore is a climate researcher living in Rovaniemi. This interview from him in January 2019 in the City newspaper. The release of carbon from permafrost incurs high financial costs. This could be avoided by climate modification in which aerosol particles are introduced into the upper atmosphere according to a Finnish Chinese study published in the journal Nature Communications. So you can read that report via the link in the info section. Over to the United Arab Emirates in the Gulf today, 30th of July. Sunny weather during Ayyid holidays. Early July, the National Centre of Meteorology had announced it carried out 219 cloud seeding operations across the country in the first half of 2020. Now we covered this about a month ago, so you can always go back and see a couple of stories about that. NCM's cloud seeding operations demonstrate the importance placed by the UAE on providing sustainable water resources through encouraging research and innovation in water related technologies. So it was just a quick round up of um, some stories from around the world. So the High Pass, the High Pass Observatory. The High Pass, High Power Rural Stimulation Observatory was a research facility intended to study the ionosphere and its influence on radio communications. It was operated by the UCLA Plasma Physics Laboratory from 1986 through 2007. The High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program (HARP) is a similar facility funded jointly by the US Air Force and US Navy. Well, that's a bit old news because it's now University of Alaska, isn't it? Or Fairbanks, whatever. The high, high pass facility was shut down and much of the equipment sold as surplus in the spring of 2010. Puerto Rico, Arecibo, harp like ionospheric research project underway in Arecibo. This is from 2014. Work is underway to complete the construction of an ion, ionospheric research facility at the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico that bears some similarities to the High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program, HARP. It is basically the same as HARP for the science, except that HARP was in the Aurora region, where the physics of the ionosphere is quite different with all the energetic particles and magnetic fields. HARP also had 3 gigawatts of effective radiated power, 3 gigawatts, 2014, of effective radiated power, where Arecibo will only be about 200 megawatts and that's from the National Association for Amateur Radio website. Denver, Colorado, just north of there. Have an interesting little facility there. In the information section, or maybe the comments section, I will put all the HARP locations information I have. You can make use of these yourself on maps or whatever. ISCAT, Tromso, Norway. The Dugar facility, that's from Amusing Planet gives you an idea of the size of it. If you look at the satellite map, you can see the size of trees there. Easy to compare the site actual size of the facility. Allegedly unused nowadays, so all rusty and that. A few years ago in North Brazil, there was definitely a facility here. When I looked at this about 10 years ago, that 
field to the left, the square patch, had antennas on it and it was a square patch. You can see it was a square patch but it's quite overgrown now. Although interestingly to the right of that there is now this. That's a bit blurry on maps on the satellite image but you know, it looks like the usual kind of heart power pack formation going on there still. Something else there. That's Brazil, North Brazil. Over to Peru, the radio observatory, quite familiar to you. China, that looks quite familiar to you, doesn't it? Western Australia, worth a look. Whether these are actually harp type facilities, that's for you to decide, isn't it? So, India, looks familiar. It really is for you to decide. I'm not saying they are or they aren't. I'm just saying, here's some coordinates, you can go and look at them. Um, the information is quite common to find anyway. Most people who have looked into HARP know there's facilities all around the world. There's a link to an article in the info box that um, links to the South American ones. So for now we'll just leave it at that. Bit of a random news this week. Um, look after yourself. Take care. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your dislikes if you dislike it. Thank you if you subscribe as well. That's always a good one to chuck in, isn't it? Look after yourselves. See you next time.